Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Happy Valentine's to everybody. For a lot of people, this is the day. Uh, we do hope that uh, relationships will be strengthened rather uh, than the other way around. Today we'll be looking at the fact that foreign embassies owe $5.3 million ground rent. FCTA clamps down on defaulters and also APC asks Nigerian police to arrest 16 notable persons in Kano State. Of course, we'll be looking at what the headlines are on the national dailies and it's going to be a very sumptuous one as it is. Once again, good morning. Welcome to the program. Happy Valentine's to you. Let's now take the quote of the day and return to do other to look at the top trending issues. The higher your energy level, the more efficient your body. The more efficient your body, the better you feel, and the more you will use your talent to produce outstanding results. That's the quote of the day by Tony Robbins. Energy level, very important, and um, let me use this. Uh, whether you understand it or not, just uh, know that uh, it is very important for you to exercise. It's important for you to be optimally uh, uh, functioning uh, with your body, and you cannot do that if you're docile, if you're not docile now, if you're uh, just uh, having a sedentary uh, job or something or lifestyle. Now you don't get out, you don't exercise, you don't run, you don't do anything that will keep your energy level so great. When you hear energy level, you shouldn't be thinking about taking energy drinks, that's not what it means. But make sure your body is functioning optimally. And when that happens, you find out that all your other faculties will be in place to make sure that you produce the results that you need to produce. Whatever you do with your physical body also impacts on your brain as well. If you haven't known that, please try and know it. So uh, don't leave your body just there. Don't, don't leave it lying. Like they say, if you either use it or you lose it. We don't want to lose our optimal performances. We don't want to lose any part of our body or any faculty uh, that we possess. We need to just keep it high up there and make sure that we are the best of whatever we are supposed to be, the best version of ourselves that it is. So we'll take the top trending uh, issues this morning. And the first one is that MFLA forged documents used to pay foreign observers $6.2 million. That is according to the uh, erstwhile secretary to the government of the Federation. So former secretary of the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, said on Tuesday that $6.2 million was released from the Central Bank of Nigeria in February 2023 using a forged document. Mustafa stated this when he appeared at the fraud prosecution witness or asked the fraud prosecution witness in the ongoing fraud trial of the immediate past CBN governor, Godwin Emefele, before the Federal Capital Territory High Court in Meitama, Abuja. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had alleged that on February 8, 2023, Emefele connived with one Odoe Cheme, who is now on the run to obtain $6.2 million from the CBN, claiming that it was requested by the SGF via a letter dated 26th of January 2023. The anti-graft agency also alleged that MFLA in January 2023 forged a document titled Re Presidential Directive on Foreign Election Observer Missions dated 26th January 2023. Now, led in evidence by the prosecution counsel, Rotimi Jacob, on Tuesday, Mustafa noted that neither the documents came from the president nor his office. He also denied uh, receiving any amount from the state money. He explained that a correspondence that has the seal of the Nigerian president does not carry a reference number. 
Furthermore, he said that the, F the fake decision are not transmitted by letters, but rather through extracts after conclusions are adopted. Mustafa also told the court that the federal government had no business with foreign election observers. He said Nigerian government has no business with foreign election observers. I'm quoting him now. I have managed two election cycles and I know that for a fact, INEC has the sole responsibility for that. Mustafa pointed out that the approval of the fund was never on the agenda of the Federal Executive Council held on January 18, 2023 and could not have been approved. He revealed a meeting on January 18, which the vice president presided over the meeting and as secretary, Mustafa was to prepare the agenda of the meeting of which there were 16 points, but none was for the payment to foreign election observers. Oyedekpo asked him to confirm if the letter conveying the presidential directives for the approval of the money emanated from him. Mustafa responded in the negative. He also said Abubakar Jubril, who was said to have received the money in cash, was never a staff of his office. The trial judge, Justice Hamza Muazu, adjourned the matter till March 7, 11, and 25 for continuation of trial. Well, a lot of things are coming out of this. We're, we're just waiting for the drama to unfold, and we'll see where this is all going to end. Forging the president's signature, where have I heard that before? Okay, some, sometimes in an Ondo state, something like that happened, and they said the signature of the governor was forged. We don't know what the fate of these people who forged this signature uh, is, and we don't even know them for a fact that these are the people who forged the governor's signature, the late governor now, the, his signature, they said, was forged. Now the president, the central bank governor, the former central bank governor, forged the president's signature, We'll just wait and see what, how this unfolds. Uh, we, are, we cannot say anything now. It's still in the courts. But the second thing we're looking at is the fact that union protest ban on Sashe Akohol in Abuja gives NAFDAQ 14 days. The members of the Food, Beverage and Tobacco Senior Staff Association of Nigeria has given the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, 14 days to reverse its ban on sachet alcohol. The association and affiliate of the Trade Union Congress, TUC, issued a threat during a protest at the NAFDAQ headquarters in Abuja on Tuesday. Members of the association threatened to increase protests across the agency's offices nationwide if nothing is done about it. The national president of the association, Jimo Ibo, led the protest and submitted a letter containing the demands of the union. According to Ibo, the ban hurts the union as most of its members work in the distilling and blending companies. On February 1, NAFDAQ started the enforcement of the ban on alcoholic beverages in sachets and glass bottles of 20 milliliters and below. NAFDAQ boss Mojishola Adeyeye says, as of January 31, 2024, no such beverages were registered with the NAPDAC. Okay, a very interesting one. And uh, it, it was said by NAPDAC that uh, these uh, this drinks, these sachet drinks and little bottles below 200 milliliters contain about 30% alcohol. And so that's the reason that it was banned. That's one of the reasons it was banned. And I don't know. All these uh, drinks that come in sachets, uh, most of them have big bottles as well. Uh, so it, does it mean that whenever it is in a big bottle, it is not up to 30%? There are some alcohol uh, beverages that are almost like 100% alcohol. So what are we talking about? So if that is the reason why it was, it was banned, will they ban the big bottles or are they going to be looking at the big bottles to see? When we were growing up, there was something called shot. You, know, you, you measure uh, alcohol in a small uh, glass um, cup that they call a shot. So you take one shot and a shot is almost, let's say, equivalent to one of the sachets that we are seeing now or the small bottles that we are seeing now. So are we going back to that? Because if it is not just to ban alcohol in its entirety, like in some parts of the north, then there must be a way out for these people who drink it. So I don't know. Why do people re really resort to drinking so much alcohol? Why do they resort to selling it 
uh, at parks and everywhere that we sp find this sachet alcohol. Why, why, why? Those are the questions we're asking. And if we're not able to answer, maybe something really terrible may happen. So if these people are protesting, what if uh, the protest uh, escalates into something that we do not want? I don't know. I'm just asking the questions. I'm not saying go back on your decision. I'm not saying do not go back on your decisions. I'm just asking some questions and, and hoping that the best will come out of all this. Now, UK signs deal to allow British lawyers practice in Nigeria. That's this third te uh, top trending. The United Kingdom and Nigeria are set to sign a partnership agreement that will permit uh, British legal practitioners to operate businesses and render services in Nigeria. In a press release on its website on Tuesday, the partnership deal between the UK and Nigeria is to promote trade and investment and open new prospects for both countries. It also disclosed that it was designed to extend beyond finance and it can build upon an already productive seven billion dollar partnership between both countries according to the uk's department of business and trade the two countries are set to sign a new partnership intended to enhance cooperation between both nations now the deal was tagged uh, the enhanced trade and investment partnership uh, etip you might want to call it which would be the first time the uk would be signing this particular deal with an african country British Business and Trade Secretary Kemi Badenoch disclosed that the agreement would open a lot of opportunities for the Brits as Nigeria is one of the fastest growing economies in Africa. The deal will also see Nigeria commit to taking steps towards reducing barriers that keep UK attorneys from practicing international and foreign law in the West African state. Um, I do not know whether what happens is that Nigerians can practice in Britain or not but I do not see in that document where it states that Nigerian lawyers can also practice in Britain. So if it is a one-way traffic, I don't know how that uh, is going to be a very serious benefit to us if our people cannot also practice in Britain. But maybe um, other documents that are not, um, are not available to us show that Nigerians can uh, practice in Britain. Because the question Nigerians are asking is, British lawyers can come to Nigeria and practice, can our lawyers also go to Britain and practice? If that agreement has been reached a long time before now, we need to know. If that agreement is also part of this document that is going to be signed, or if it has not been signed already, um, then we need to know. So let it be a two-way traffic rather than a one-way traffic, I'm just saying. Now we'll take a short break and when we return we'll be reviewing the paper, see what the headlines are saying and our guest is hopefully going to be Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner. Stay with us.